Okay, we are here today with Supersonic Sarah Chavez, and today after she's today after she's recently run the LA Marathon, her first LA Marathon, her first marathon run, right? Yes. And, uh, congratulations! She ran a, a whopping three hours and four three minutes, forty three minutes, right? And yes, started, thank you. <laughs> a lot of training for it, and so we're here to talk to her today. See what kind of words of advice she has for us. Tell me about your running background. What if, how did you get into running and what have you been doing? Like what kind of races and training? So I started running five years ago and it was basically just to, you know, get off the couch, change my lifestyle, be a little active. And um, I ran a decent half marathon back then, but um, then I got injured with really bad shin splints. Yeah. And plus with the pandemic, I just kind of gave up on signing up for races. Right. Um, and that's when a friend encouraged me to learn about low heart rate training. So I learned about that and um, that helped me a lot. I've been running almost exclusively slow runs like ever since then. And so I've enjoyed it, you know, just running for my health, um, running for fun. But then finally last summer, I decided to really pursue um, the challenge of the marathon. So that's when I joined South Bay Runners Club. Um, yeah, so my goals joining the club were, number one, learn how to train properly, and number two, uh, to make running friends. And so I definitely met both of those goals. That's good. There we go, here we go. All right, Sarah, way to go, Sarah. Good. That's good. Yeah. That's good. So she, you did a few like 5Ks or 10Ks, half marathon, like before you did your marathon, right? Um, It was just one half marathon. And when I joined the club, I um, trained for another half marathon last October. And I feel like that was a really good uh, base, like building a base for the marathon. Good. So that's good. So you mostly were training by yourself until you joined your club. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. And in, and and in the club, you met some people. You started to train better. You did you uh, like trained more often with other people. Made some friends. Kind of made things easier, maybe. Yeah. I I I. It took a while to make some friends, but I definitely you know met my coach. Coach Mark there has helped me a lot, and I follow his plans, the threshold track nights. Um, yeah, running with the club has been, has really transformed my running because it's made my running like way more consistent, keeps you accountable. That's yeah. good, that's yeah. good, good. Mm -hmm. What did you do to prepare for your first marathon? You mentioned something, you mentioned threshold training. I'm not sure what else, maybe you can yeah. explain to us what threshold training is and what you've done to prepare for the marathon that you did. Yeah. Um, so my training every week is pretty much, um, um, yeah, one track night that's every Tuesday with the running club and that's the threshold training and one long run every Sunday with the running club also, um, hills, hill repeats once a week at the suggestion of my running coach, coach Mark, um, and also with the running club. <laughs> And then also just lots of really slow miles. So um, since, I, wow, at least 12 weeks, I've been just building up the miles. Yeah. Um, I would try to run at least 50 miles a week and um, several 60 miles a week. Yeah, you kind of worked your way up to that, I'm guessing. Maybe you started off at maybe 20 or 30 and just worked your way up or how did? Yeah, I think maybe at least 30 was pretty normal for me and then i built up to 40s and then when you felt like my body was ready i started you know doing 50 mile weeks but i also made sure to take rest weeks so every fourth week i would reduce my miles by almost half just to give my body a chance to to rest and recover Right. Because I didn't want to burn out too, because I think yeah. 60 miles is the rest is, is important. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons I run 
I made sure to just take all my easy days very easy. Um, I really believe in that. I, I have like a really big pace differential between my easy days and my hard days. Seven minute miles at track night, 12 and 13 minute miles on all my easy days. I feel like that's really, that's the only way I've been able to do it. Go, go Supersonic, go Brent. It's to do it that way, it works what? for me. And you said track now you're doing threshold. What exactly, for people who don't know, what exactly is threshold training? What it um, it's to increase your lactate threshold. So your body adapts to um, clearing lactate buildup from your muscles and um, at the at the fast paces. So you start, um, you start, you just, uh, over time, you increase your um, time running at that threshold and you decrease your rest periods and um i love track night i've i have not missed a track night since like last september <laughs> because um, yeah they're really um motivating for me as i see progress or like progress with my paces so um yeah <laughs> that's good and i i've seen i've done some of the trainings there as well. And I've seen you doing your slow days and your fast days, and you definitely do your slow days slow and your fast days fast, and that's that's really good. Now threshold, again, for people who don't know, so you, you for threshold, you run a certain pace for a certain number of minutes or a certain number of laps, or what is it exactly that happens? Um, yeah, oh yeah, so threshold is at about your 10K pace. And when you start the training season, you're holding the pace for about 10 minutes at a time with some rest periods and the whole workout's up to like 40 minutes of workout. Um, so yeah, it's about the 10K pace. And um, by the end of the training season, you're up to 40 minutes of threshold with no rest. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. So you start off running 10 minutes at a, at a 10K pace, you take a few minutes rest, and you work your way up to running 40 minutes with no rest at your 10K pace. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Come on, Brent. It's my only man. Let's go. Come on, Brent. Let's Come on, go. Sarah. Wow. That's intense. That is pretty intense. It is, but I think it, it really, it, it works and it really prepares you for um, the just to be tough during the marathon because those last six miles of the LA marathon um, really hurt. Um, just like when you're training on the track, you you get the heavy legs and you get, your your legs just don't wanna move anymore, but you have to be yeah. like mentally tough to, to keep going. I feel like yeah. the track nights really prepared me for that. Yeah, that's good. And you mentioned hill hill training. You did some hill repeats or something. Hill training. What did what did you do there? Did... Yeah. So um, the running club, the runners club, we have a route where you just go all run all the way up to the top of the hill, uh, and I do it at like I try to like hit my max heart rate. You know, just run them hard and then go down, let your body recover, and then go up another hill, and then do that about. 14 times. <laughs> How long is the hill? Oh, uh, I don't really know. Oh. It's a, it's a pretty, it's a pretty uh, steep hill. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Pretty intense. Pretty intense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but then your body adapts also. Um, I saw my heart rate adapting on the hill, which was right. really cool. I did like at least 10 weeks of hills. That's good. And LA has got a pretty hilly course from what I understand. Yeah, I think a lot of people um, well, for me as a new runner to the LA Marathon, probably, you know, underestimated, um, like how much you would feel the hills throughout almost the entire course. Yeah. <laughs> but I think the hill repeats definitely helped me, um, made my legs stronger, my heart stronger. Um, yeah, LA has a, a lot of hills. It's a tough course. <laughs> yeah, it does. So that's good yeah. that you did some hill repeats and your threshold seemed to prepare you. What went according to plan during the race? Yeah, so um, I think from the start, uh, things were, you know, going well the way that I had planned. Um, I got there with my friends from the running club. We got there on time. We had our surgical jackets to keep us warm. So we were ready. Um, I had all my energy gels ready. I had one friend there that I was going to run with. Um, 
and I felt pretty good for at least, I would say, at least the first 13 miles I was feeling pretty good and happy with energy, which is what it's supposed to feel like, I think. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, what came up during the race yeah. that you weren't expecting? That you're like, oh, I didn't really plant this. Did all this training, all these hills and all this threshold and everything. And then I didn't yeah. expect this during the race. What was, what happened like that during the race? Yeah, I think I wasn't expecting to pace myself mm -hmm. for the whole race. So that was harder. You know, I couldn't find a pacer at the start. Um, but fortunately, um, the 340 pacer did appear like somewhere around Rodeo Drive. So I was able to keep up with him until the finish line and you That's jumped good. in at mile 18 right. and you saw the pacer. I actually, ran, I actually ran with you for the last eight miles or something. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. So I think that what didn't go as planned was just maybe being a little naive. I kind of thought that the last six miles I was going to be able to really like kick it into high gear and hit some super fast paces. But by that point, I was just kind of hanging on and my pace slowed down a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. Yeah, I wasn't expecting um, to be like so low in energy in the last part of the race. Yeah. And and people do often say the, the race starts at mile 20. What are your what are your future plans for, for running? Like what do you, you have future marathon goals or any other races? What yeah. are you kind of doing or? So in the near future, I'm definitely going to keep training with the South Bay Runners Club. Um, I'm really like grateful to Coach Mark for his encouragement and he encourages me to keep training and I will. I have the time, I have the dedication. Uh, no, no races in mind yet, but I am pretty confident that uh, if I keep training the way that I am, that I'll qualify for Boston soon. So at least I'll I'll be doing that. And um, yeah, I just what, want to I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I just want to see, you know, like reach my full potential right now. That's good, that's good. Yeah. What is the, what is the qualifying? Do you know what the qualifying time for Boston is for your age group? Yeah, for my age group is three hours and 40 minutes. Oh, you're close and you did three. Yeah. Oh yeah, so yeah, if you were to do another one, keep training, you could, I'm sure you could, you could qualify for that. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Good. Very good. Um, what advice would you give those out there, uh, mm -hmm. particularly someone like you, young woman is going to run their first marathon. What would what advice would you give them that are going out to run their first marathon? Okay, uh, I would definitely suggest finding other runners, finding a community of people that will make running fun. Um, help keep you accountable to do all of your workouts and all of your runs. And um, I guess if someone's just starting to run, I would say just go out and run as slow as you have to, even if it, you might as well be walking. Just going out to be active is a start. Um, yeah, no, no reason to go off doing a marathon after your first week of training, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And so I think also the running club has the benefit of um, you're surrounded by a lot of people who have similar goals to yours. Um, you're surrounded by faster runners that helps you be faster. It helped me. And then you have the the coaches who, you know, try to find people who are knowledgeable and soak up that yeah. knowledge from them. So finding like-minded people that have similar goals here seems to help. And uh, especially if you're and, training for a marathon, right? There's probably days you're like, oh, it's raining outside. I really want to get up and go out and run or, you know. Yeah, uh, having yeah you, you have to be, you have to be consistent. I, yeah. I think I only missed a couple of runs when I was sick, but um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Hopefully well, that, consistency is going to pay off in the marathon. Yeah. I think seems, it did for me. <laughs> seems to have paid off for you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, I noticed you've got some pictures hanging mm -hmm. on the wall there. I'm just wondering, you know, 26.2. What is that? Is that? Uh... This is what my sisters made me. It was. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. 26.2 miles. You ran 26.2 miles. LA. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. So I just actually. Um, yeah, I'm really grateful to my family. All my sisters showed up to cheer for me. 
Um, it sounds like having a support group beyond your club seems to help too to prepare for a marathon. Yeah. yeah, it just feels good to have people who are there to support you and are proud of you. And yeah, it was that, actually that a boost of energy during the race when you're feeling kind of terrible to see yeah. everyone cheering for you. Right, right, yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah. That's good. I, and I also understand um, that with, I heard that, is it your dad that used to be a marathon runner? Is that right? Or? Yeah, my dad started running when he was in his 50s. Oh, wow. And just, just to be healthy, he started running in his 50s and he he ended up running 19 marathons. So, oh, wow. Yeah, as, as soon as I crossed the finish line, I was just, I was so emotional. I think I cried like five times during the marathon, like tears wow. of joy. But I crossed the finish line and I made sure to call my dad first thing I oh, wow. called That's him and awesome. he was very happy for me. <laughs> I imagine he was, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time and congratulations on your your LA Marathon success there. And uh, three hours and four, three minutes is, is, a, is a great first marathon. And I'm sure if you stick with it, like you say, probably uh, soon you'll be qualifying for Boston with that, doing that sub 340 or whatever you want to do, whether it's run a marathon or not, I'm sure you'll be successful. Yeah, thank you so much, John. Thanks for right. everything. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thanks.